Beam down smoke. Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of Investment Odyssey on my channel. My name is Nalo and today we are going to be taking a look at the fourth episode of Investment Odyssey. So, so far we've already come quite a long way. The series is actually pretty popular on my channel, which is a really good thing. I'm glad that you guys are enjoying it. So without further ado, let's get straight into this video after a quick word from our sponsor, Spop.gg. So that's going to be swap.gg. If you guys do want to check them out, you can use the link in the description below. It's going to support the channel directly. And of course, you guys can also use PayPal deposits, which is very rare for third party sites in this era. So with that being said, let's get straight on to this. So here's a quick reminder of what our spreadsheet currently looks like. As you can see, some of the items we've already made a decent amount of money on. Those Phoenix cases rose a little bit. That Op Asimov rose a couple dollars as well, which was pretty much expected. And these Gold Wolf foils are actually doing pretty good in this current market as well. Again, if you guys are interested in making sure you're updated with the spreadsheets, I do post updates to the spreadsheets inside of my Discord server, so you can go ahead and check that out in the description below. Now, out with the old and in with the new, let's go ahead and move on to this fourth episode of Investment Odyssey. I'm glad you guys all took time out of your day to come check it out with me, and let's get started. So one major thing that did happen since the prior episode was the fact that the M4A1S actually got a buff, which sent it up in price to a lot of people, because a lot of people were actually going to start using the M4A1S at its reduced cost. One thing I did since the previous episode to compensate for this change was I went ahead and offloaded the M4A4 Hellfire that we bought in, I believe, the first episode of the series, and that meant that we were able to go ahead and have a little bit of extra balance on the side for this episode and future episodes. So with the M4A4 Hellfire sold off, the main reason that I chose to do that was simply because M4A4s are now going to be slower moving just because of the M4A1S also being prominent. This also plays into the first purchase of this episode, which is the M4A1S Decimator in minimal wear condition. This is going to be a pretty nice skin to hold on to for a bit, especially into the Rio Major as the pro players decide if they want to use the new upgraded M4A1S or not, and if it does become a more popular skin, we can make a decent margin of money off of this decimator purchase. The M4A1S decimator, I believe, is going to be one of the most primary sources of income for investing in the M4A1S in general, simply because the M4A1S decimator is not only at an affordable price for a lot of people, but it's also a very good skin to get a lot of value out of your money. It's cheap, and it also looks really good, which makes it a very popular choice for a lot of players. Now, there are other M4A1Ss that we can go ahead and purchase, but at the moment, I'm kind of just going to hold on to this one decimator and see where it goes, because we already did buy that well-worn m 4 a 1s nightmare from the previous episodes, so that one is going to be, you know, kind of contributing towards that M4A1S investment that we have in general now. Now back to the RPG theme that we've used in previous episodes, the next purchase is actually going to play into the RPG theme and specifically into a new game that we have coming out, which is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So Assassin's Creed Valhalla is obviously set in Norse mythology, and another thing that's set in Norse mythology is the CSGO Norse Collection. Now obviously the Norse Collection has not been doing great simply right after the operation ended, because there were a lot of panic sellers that were just investing into things for the first time and didn't have a good grasp of things so they went ahead and sold off too quickly which dropped the prices of a lot of things. So from the Norse collection we went ahead and picked up the Desert Eagle Emerald Jormungandr in factory new condition. This is one of those things that I think is going to do really really well in the future as time goes on and it's something that it's going to be a little bit more of a long-term hold but we're already seeing a decent jump on the skin itself on the community market. I've been wanting to pick one of these up for investment odyssey for a long time so I'm glad I finally got one. This one also happened to have a pretty nice sticker rundown with some big stickers which I think is a pretty interesting thing, and it's also going to allow us to sell this a lot easier in the future when the time comes. Now, I guess now is a pretty good time to kind of explain why I'm buying some of these more expensive investments that'll probably rise slower instead of just spending a lot more money on smaller and higher return on investments, like for example with the gold web foils. The reason I'm spending some on these more expensive investments is simply because it is going to be a more interesting video if I buy some of these more expensive items that are going to gain money but at a slower rate, simply because, you know, I don't want to just put a whole bunch of money into these random small things because that won't make for a very good video. Now moving on to the next thing that I want to go ahead and invest in for this video, this is actually going to be stuff from the Cobblestone Collection, so I guess really a throwback to the RPG theme from the previous videos, but uh, the Cobblestone Collection I think is a pretty interesting one because a lot of YouTubers are currently opening up Cobblestone packages, which could popularize the you know opening of these packages by the general community, and so I think these are something that a lot more people are going to be focusing on, at least currently, and so that could kind of you know create a market increase. 
increase for these items. Another good thing about the Cobblestone Collection is that it's pretty unlikely to come back in any form, at least in the current state of things. We are especially, you know, experimenting with stuff like the map Anubis, so there's probably not going to be a big spotlight on Cobblestone anytime in the near future. So I think right now is a pretty decent time to go ahead and check out these items. Obviously, they are going to be slow movers because they're older and rarer, and that's how they depend on their value increasing, but I still think they're interesting to look into. Now, as for the Cobblestone Collection, there are a few items that I wanted to highlight, and potentially some of them that I did want to buy. I wanted to go ahead and look at the USP Royal Blue, which in a lot of people's minds is not a very good looking item just because the blue on it just doesn't look all that great, but it is still a USP, which is a very popular weapon, and it's also one of the most popular weapons from the Cobblestone Collection that has a skin, at least, so, you know, pretty interesting thing there. Another big one here is going to be the Desert Eagle Hand Cannon, which is going to be very popular for trade-ups, especially to the Knight, and another reason why this is good is because the Knight is actually a very popular weapon right now because it's on the M4A1S. It's probably the most high-tier M4A1S in the game, so being the Desert Eagle Hand Cannon, obviously that can increase the value of the Hand Cannon itself, simply because it can trade up to the M4A1S Knight. However, the Hand Cannon is pretty expensive right now, and a bit too expensive for the budget of this video, so it might be something to look at in the future, but not right now. Because of these factors, I'm going to go ahead and grab one USP Royal Blue, and then call it good for the Cobblestone Collection for right now, and then I'm going to kind of watch it as time goes on and see how it does, and see if it's worth investing more money into in a future episode. The specific Royal Blue that I decided to pick up was going to be the Souvenir Minimal Wear Royal Blue, which I got in Cologne 2015 stickers, so that's going to be a lot easier to sell in the future just because that is a somewhat more rare Royal Blue, and it's also a Minimal Wear one, which means that the scratches aren't as bad as something like the Field Tested. Alright guys, so we've bought quite a lot of stuff for this episode, it's a good way to return to the series, but there is one more item that I wanted to pick up before this video closes off, another pretty cool item. This is going to be the Dreamhack 2014 Ninja in Pajamas Hollow. So the reason I wanted to pick this up is because even though I did put out a video on it, it has been, you know, enough time for the hype to die down around the stickers that, you know, comes from making a video on them, of course. But the Ninjas in Pajamas Dreamhack 2014 sticker is a specifically interesting one because it is one of the only brown hollows in the game that actually looks pretty decent, and it has been used on a lot of crafts and probably will be used on a lot of crafts in the future. So I wanted to go ahead and pick up on one of these just because it has been doing pretty well recently, and it is a very good looking sticker. And with that, that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hopefully you enjoyed the purchases. If you want to make some of these purchases yourself, you can always use something like swap.gg, which there is a link to in the description below. They're going to have a really great marketplace to use with only a 5% sale fee. And of course they do have PayPal deposits. And here is the final spreadsheet for this video. And I actually have some good news about the spreadsheets. This one, of course, isn't working very well with the auto updating system. So there is someone in my discord that's actually working on a new way to use CSGO spreadsheets. And I think he's going to have a pretty interesting thing set up. So I'll go ahead and notify you guys and use that in a future episode once it is able to be used, so there is a little bit of an interesting thing there. Obviously, we've made some money on some of these investments, which is good, and uh, let's keep moving on to the future and try to reach our goal. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to come spend it with me and this video in front of you, and I really am appreciative of all the recent growth on the channel. It's really cool to see you guys joining the community and becoming good investors. If you guys want the latest and greatest investment tips anywhere else on YouTube, be sure to click that subscribe button and also click that like button if you enjoyed this video. There will be more Investment Odyssey to come in the future. Thank you guys for following the series, and I will see you all next time. Peace.